think it's widely known that the University of Botswana wants to become a research intensive institution to contribute to the development of the nation. And in that context, the university undertakes broad-based uh, research in a variety of, of areas, and all of those areas are themed towards the nation's uh, development goals. In particular, we have five research themes. These are energy, water, food, environmental sustainability, and health. UB's research is undertaken by students and staff in a variety of faculties and departments and research is at the UB's Okavango Research Institute study the, uh, the ecosystem which is the Okavango Delta uh, that is the largest wetland ecosystem in the world uh, and surrounding drylands. But we also have a number of research centres um, such as uh, those studying HIV and AIDS, uh, clean and renewable energy and wildlife management and these interdisciplinary uh, groups all contribute to development and uh, knowledge for the nation. My uh, field of interest really is in HIV and the challenge that is facing us as far as uh, HIV is concerned uh, for the fact that we have been struggling for uh, so many years with HIV research, trying to find a cure or even trying to find a, a, a vaccine. Um, and sometimes I've also ventured into tuberculosis to try to understand the biochemical basis of some of the observations that we see in TB. This uh, laboratory is called um, UB UPEN um, uh, Molecular Laboratory because it's a shared facility between the University of Botswana and the University of Pennsylvania and the, 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 the laboratory was created through a MAPI grant. We do project on malaria. Uh, for malaria I intend um, starting from mosquitoes, speciation and microbiome and infectivity for uh, malaria parasites and also arboviruses. Human genetic uh, for of the host for um, susceptibility to uh, malaria and pharmacogenetics of the treatment. And finally, we do uh, malaria parasite studies in terms of speciation in, in, in Botswana, because we work in Botswana, also on Cameroon. We do a lot of uh, work on uh, papillomavirus, the genetic diversity of the virus from Botswana, of course, uh, from biopsies, uh, cervical cancer biopsy, uh, the human DNA, the host DNA methylation related to the uh, cancer uh, um, risk in women infected, and the phylogenetic analysis of uh, means the diversity of the virus compared uh, with the Kenyan sample. For my PhD study, I'm looking at exploring the impact of uh, HIV infection on the distribution of HPV genotypes and studying the host epigenetic changes associated with cervical cancer progression. I collaborate as well with Botswana Harvard AIDS Partnership. There are some uh, things that I do here and then there are some things that I do at BHP. What we are doing informs the public health stakeholders as recently we published a data that shows that uh, HPV uh, genotype 16 is associated with, uh, it's mostly found in HIV infected uh, uh, patients, which that to me is it's, it's quite, it's quite a uni unique findings that uh, minist the Ministry of Health should be aware of. I'm looking for a solution to a huge problem. Those are actually breast tissues that I'm going to use for diagnosis. I'm actually going to extract that DNA DNA from those breast tissues. Typically, they are confirmed breast cancer patients. I'll be determining a gene, a change in that DNA sequence that alters, that basically contributes towards uh, resistance in terms of certain treatment when they, receive, when they receive chemotherapy. Because over the years, it usually takes about three to five years 
while someone is still responding and after that they relapse. So I'm trying to figure out what, is there any alternative treatment that those patients can receive? Our work complements the one that has been done by the Ministry of Health because they are aiming for, for, for malaria elimination and we are contributing some findings so that they achieve that objective. This project is uh, sponsored by the Department of Energy. We are moving towards green energy to actually look at the uh, uh, possibility of using biofuels. First phase was a partnership with the Japanese uh, government. But the second phase, now it is the, the government alone. At the end of the, the project, we have actually built the testing center for biodiesel. This project uh, could uh, play a major role in the uh, uh, poverty eradication. It could be done at a uh, rural community level because there's nothing complicated. If we identify communities and provide them with all what is needed, they can produce their own biodiesels within a community and use it for agricultural purposes. But researchers also need help. They need to uh, have their research managed and that's really where the Office of Research and Development or OID as it's often known comes in. OID is like the hub of a wheel. Uh, it's, it's the centre of the, the research process but those spokes of the wheel go out to the researchers in the faculties and the departments. So in that context, OID has a director and deputy director for overall management uh, of the, uh, the office and for the, uh, the processes that occur in the office. And then there are four key areas where the uh, office operates. We support researchers with everything that has to do with funded research, be it internally funded research or externally funded research. Our role is to make sure that we know what the funder expects in terms of are you eligible as an entity, can you meet the donor's expectations. There is a need uh, for funding to buy special equipment and sometimes even to build up a team uh, of appropriate you know, professional and technical persons that must uh, perform the appropriate experiments. There is need to train uh, in the use of those uh, special equipment so that uh, it is utilized to the best and that uh, the, the results that we obtain can stand up to scrutiny in any scientific uh, you know, forum. The cost estimate that we have is around 11 million. Running a lab is extremely expensive. Exactly. We, we pay around 64,000 rands for the BSC, the hoods, to obtain them. Monthly, we spend at least $10,000 a wide range of advice to our researchers, to our external stakeholders. The whole aim is to have university research advance towards technology and knowledge transfer and commercialization of outputs from our research. We um, provide advice and assistance to researchers to help them identify potential intellectual properties within their research. If you come up with new information, the edge is to share that with the other your colleagues in the international community. It turns out that also 
uh, by so doing once we have shared the information and it has become commonplace uh, that you can no longer claim any uh, intellectual property you know uh, rights on that the other major role we play uh, is that of facilitating access to the university expertise, the university facilities, and other capabilities to industry and uh, community partners who wish to utilize, uh, uh, to tap into the knowledge base that the university possess. Uh, so we, that can be in the form of contract research, collaboration where they work together as mutual partners in a research project. Uh, it can also be consultancy. Uh, when speaking about your, your university research, you are really talking about uh, the outputs and its impact. And that output and impact depends on the quality for it will be used by those who will use it. And so the University of Australia, we have been a major contributor to the national uh, research in terms of the total predictive output. When we talk about quality, really, we are talking about the knowledge that has been okayed or peer-reviewed and uh, accepted by the peers in the research community. And that research is the research that is trusted. Uh, the Research Ethics Unit is the responsible coordinating four committees. Uh, one which reviews research that involves human subjects, then the one that reviews research that deals with uh, animal care and use, and the one that deals with chemicals and hazardous materials. Uh, in addition, we have a research risk committee which deals with looking into uh, research misconduct before you start research, you've got to apply for ethical clearance, and that is usually efficiently done by our uh, Office of Research and Development. And then after they screened our applications, these are referred to the Ministry of Health, where they also do the screening, and then uh, it's good to go to the facility, if it is a hospital, like say Marina, or one of the clinics, then uh, we also have got to get a ethical clearance from that clinic, and then ultimately you've got to have the the informed consent from the participants. OID uh, facilitates research rather than undertakes research on its own behalf.